uh, I had a hobby too. Mine happened to be guns and ballistics. And I studied guns and ballistics as much as I could, and I wrote an article it was about high velocity. So out of all my years of working at Weatherby, the last five have been some of the most exciting. Working with Adam, with him running the company. And to think that I get the opportunity of carrying on my grandfather's legacy 75 years later here in Sheridan, Wyoming, I mean, it really is a dream come true. On Our Mark, the Weatherby Podcast. It's the Weatherby Podcast, On Our Mark. Uh, We are here today with an exciting episode coming at you about, really, primarily about barrel break-in. It's one of the biggest subjects that we get from a customer service perspective at shows, in consumers, all these things. Uh, Barrel break-in, the process, what you do, what you don't do. Does it help? Does it not help? These are all questions that we get on a regular basis. And so we really wanted to sit down and talk to the two main guys here at Weatherby that do this on a daily basis, if not daily, every other day, shooting rifles a lot, finding accuracy, Mm -hmm. figuring out what we're doing when we're testing rifles. And uh, that's what this episode is going to be about. I'm Kevin Wilkerson. Luke Torkelson. Uh, Justin Eklund. And Justin, what do you do here? I'm a manufacturing engineer here, so do a lot of testing of some of our newer products and and, uh, quality control checks and stuff. Okay. I'm Jim Allen, uh, also working in manufacturing engineering and uh, doing a lot of similar stuff, uh, setting up new processes, improving existing ones, and making cool stuff. Yeah. And most recently, you guys have been testing a lot of barrels. Uh, You do that a lot. But we were in a meeting just the other day that when I walked away from it, I was like, man, I learned a lot from that meeting, just hearing you guys talk, seeing the data that you had. Obviously, we won't be ex- exposing all that data in this, but um, just from a basic perspective of some of the stuff that we do internally to to vet out barrels, to vet out cartridges, to to find out accuracy, things like that. That, that at the end at the end of the day, that's what people are looking for. So, we have a prescribed break-in process, and um, we'll get into that in a few, but. Really, some of the data that I saw last week that I found intriguing was the amount of shots you guys will shoot out of a barrel while testing it and what we see as as we shoot that barrel. So, um, Justin, you want to jump into maybe how we go about testing some barrels? Sure. So um, one of the things we do uh, when we're testing for our our quality control and everything is the accuracy testing. So um, our, our protocol is basically to... Uh, break in the rifle, which which in our break in procedure we have um, very similar to what we have on the website, where we'll we'll shoot three and clean and shoot three and clean, and we're we're basically just trying to get down to around 20 to in in our testing it's like 22 shots, but 20 shots is fine. Um, we actually end up using five shot um, uh, accuracy standards just because we think it tells us a lot there as well. So um, going through that process, but. Uh, we end up going three different shooters. So one of the things we also try to do at Weatherby is um, when we are testing, we want to test it as if we are consumers. So I'll do some shooting. Jim will do some shooting. We've got some other shooters mm-hmm. around here um, trying to get people different holds, different pulls, you know, totally different processes, but looking for some accuracy between everyone. So, what, like, lay it out. When we're shooting, what does that look like? I mean – Lead sled, sandbags, fixture, what are we doing? Uh, so it kind of depends. Um, there's definitely some lead sled shooters. Um, I personally do not like the lead sled, uh, so I, I like bags myself. Um, but, yeah, it's, and that's the whole customer experience, the, whole the same experience. thing, just mm-hmm. the different ways of shooting and stuff. So um, so after our 22 shots, we consider the, the rifle broken in, and so at that point we'll start – uh, generally, we'll use four different types of ammo if we have four different types of ammo. You know, some of our SKUs, we only have three maybe, so we'll do those three. Um, but it's always our uh, factory ammo, and uh, we'll shoot four f- groups of five. And each per there will be three people that do that, so um, 60 shots uh, between those three people uh, with some Fowlers as well. So really, it's 63 shots. We have one shot used as a... A fouling shot and then we uh, record all of this data um, 
and try to analyze what we're seeing here. And, and so generally speaking, we'll see maybe the first 10 to, to 15 shots where the, the groups are, are not real representative of the rifle. but After break-in? Uh, during break-in. During break-in, yes. you'll start seeing a non-representative right. gr groupings. Like the first three shots, let's say maybe it's a three-inch group, and you think, man, you know, this <laughs> rifle's horrible. Well, it's just breaking in, right? So um, second three shots, maybe it's two inches, and then... The next three shots, maybe it's down to inch and a half. And, and then, then it might go back up, right? It Sometimes it does. Sometimes, yep. And so there again, and some of that could be the cleaning procedures. Some of that could be, you know, hey, I'm getting tired of shooting today. And, you know, right. you anything pulled one. like that. Yep. Yeah. Had too much coffee, you know. Something. Sure, so, sure. Um, I mean, that's, that's another thing that you're doing in this accuracy testing. Of course, there's the human element. So you have to kind of keep that in. And that's another reason why we have three different, at least three different shooters to, to try to take some of that out as well so yeah and one thing important to note on this is that if you, if you don't know this we have a pretty extensive range here at weatherby it is an underground range we have two ranges mm -hmm. one at 100 yards one that goes to 300 yards underground under the facility uses the ailer system to get the ballistic data off of it but also it's just a really strong shooting environment whereas there's no elements yeah. No wind, there's nothing. There's no wind, very there's controlled. no cold temperatures, Correct. there's yep. no warm, like it's just really, really perfect, especially for consistency and gathering mm -hmm. data. So just wanted to throw that plug out there because people might be thinking, where are they shooting all these rifles? All It's it's downstairs in the basement. It's like a bunker of sorts, um, but it's, it's a, a super cool it's range. Super so. cool basement, really. Yeah, yeah, even if it was just a basement. It isn't just a basement, <laughs> but I wanted to throw that out there. So, you know, you mentioned um, the five-shot groups. That's what we use internally as we go about shooting something like that for testing on a barrel or a cartridge or something like that. It's not necessarily an accuracy guarantee. It's not necessarily an accuracy check on all the rifles that we have. This is more or less like a when you guys are going through manufacturing uh, and ma making things better, testing things. That's kind of this process. Absolutely. Um, when we talk about our, our Weatherby accuracy guarantee, mm -hmm. we talk about Vanguard's and Mark V's having a three-shot group of 0.99 inches or less. At 100 yards. At 100 yards mm -hmm. to the original owner of the firearm. Right. Within the first two years of owning it. So there, there's. I wanted to throw that difference out there because for the end consumer, that's what they're looking at. And, and we can see that when you compile the data that you have from all the five shots, you're able to, to figure that out um, and see really where that, that rifle is shooting. Really, last week when we looked at data, most of your five-shot groups were within the parameters of a three-shot .99 group as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, generally speaking, you're doing that from an overall high perspective of accuracy, testing, velocities, things like that, whereas an end consumer is looking at the range, sitting down and hoping he shoots a one-inch group at, at with, with three shots. So, wanted to throw that, throw that out there, but I didn't mean to uh, disrupt what you were saying. So... Pretty much we're at 65 shots with break-in. So, yeah, but when we're done, if we have four types of ammo, we'll end up, I think, with 86 shots or something like that. That's what the, the math goes to. So let's talk real quick about the different ammo. Yeah, that's what I wanted. That's, so that's not, the, not, yeah. it's not feasible for every consumer to have yes, all four or every available ammo type. So maybe we should run through what yeah. our consumer break-in procedure is yeah so that would be yeah let's run through that so um justin has it in front of him but we we really act we, we it's suggested that an in consumer have two different loads so let's just say it's a 257 yeah. for reference sake we would have a one a 110 acubond and uh, and something else something else <laughs> 80 grain TTSX. An 80, an 80 grain yep. ttsx so um you know a lot of the time I would say that uh, consumers buy a rifle and maybe they're thinking that, that, that they want to shoot the 110 AccuBond and that's what that rifle's going to shoot. And it's not necessarily always the case. Every barrel is different. And we see different data and different groupings for different barrels all the time. So, you know, sometimes we will get calls about people saying, hey, I wanted to shoot a 110 AccuBond and it won't shoot that. That's a, you know, that's a, tough thing for people to understand because it's not going yeah. to shoot every single bullet made 
It's just the way that barrel makeup and metal and the bullets and everything like that happens. Jim, just tell us why that why yeah. every barrel barrel's different. <laughs> so yeah, there, there's uh, there's a there's a lot there, a lot of different. That's uh, a loaded question. Yeah, then. different techniques to uh, form the rifling and and then the way the chambers are cut. You know, there's a lot that goes into that and. Uh, um, you know, because what's going on there, th there's a lot of tight tolerances and the way that it all interacts and fits, um, you know, a, a minor change can create a scenario where one bullet might not shoot and the other does, you know, uh, your seating depth and, you know, how far a bullet is jumping. And, and there's a lot of things that go into all of that. And so uh, just, just a real minor change in a chamber can make it to where it, it'll shoot one factory load better than another. And, you know, uh, two of the same guns um, might not shoot the same loads. And so, um, and, and kind of what we recommend in, in the, you know, in your barrel break-in is, is that as you're shooting these first few rounds that you're, you're watching your group size. And, and again, you know, maybe I just go back a little bit and talk about the three shot group versus five shot yeah, and yeah, all that yeah, please. Um, as part of the break-in and, and, and as part of seeing, you know, which ammo is shooting well in your gun. Mm -hmm. Really what we want to know is we want to know, you know, what the gun shoots, you know, a 50 shot group or a hundred shots, how big of a group is it going to be? You know, you'll eventually get to a point where, um, your group, you, you'll know what that gun can do. And so, because we can't shoot that many rounds and an end consumer can't shoot that many, we're trying to come up with a statistical way of finding out, you know, if I shoot five shots and they're within this group, then overall the gun will, will perform to this level. And so, you know, a five shot will give us a little better, uh, idea of what the gun is doing rather than a three shot group, but a three shot can also, you know, give you some data on, on what a gun is shooting. And so we kind of recommend as you're breaking in your gun and you're, you know, those first 20 shots that we've talked about, you should be trying to shoot good groups and, and, you know, see where those shots are falling. And as you're doing that, you know, you can get an idea for what that ammo is going to do. And eventually, you know, at the end of, of your 20 shots, if that ammo just really isn't working, um, you know, you, you might want to continue with that, but, but it's probably time to try a different ammo. And so that's right. kind of where I was going with that is that uh, um, if a gun is not shooting an ammo well, then, then you, you, you know, you want to have a backup, a bullet that you're comfortable with shooting um, and, and start trying that after those 20 shots if it just doesn't feel like the gun is, is going to shoot that ammo well. Hmm. So for a consumer that's going to, that they bought a new gun, they're going to, mount their scope, go to the range, and break they're going to break it in. Yeah. So ideally, you want to maybe take two types of ammo that you like. Ideally. Ideally. Suggested. So the 110 Acubon to the 80 TTSX, very different bullet construction. So maybe that's a good way to go, or maybe you want a bullet that's a more similar. Either way, you grab two ammo types, head to the range, and then, Justin, you got it there in front of you, but you start with ammo type one. First to clean. Clean. First clean. Okay. Let's run through that. Let's clean. run through it. Um, it's it's on the website. It's also r readily available everywhere else. This is just our suggested cleaning procedure. Justin, you want to run through that real quick? Sure. So our, our recommended cleaning procedure is um, is you want to run several patches with uh, some cleaner uh, down the barrel. Um, let it soak a little bit, and you brush the, the barrel, we say at least 10 strokes. Um, this is one of those things where uh, some people say never brush a brush backwards in a rifle barrel. Um, I can't say I have noticed that makes any difference, mm. um, but you know, every, to each Jim, their you? own. Yeah. So particularly using a nylon brush, um, you ought to be able to scrub that barrel out and clean it. And, you know, I've cleaned hundreds of guns with a nylon brush, and they seem to do just fine forward and backward. So. Um, but, but there's so sure. many different cleaning techniques. Yeah. A lot of mm -hmm. little nuances. And everybody's got something that works for them. So um, mm -hmm. don't get too caught up on it, but just go with the, you know, factory recommendation for the cleaner you're using and make sure you follow what they say. Um, after that, then run two patches soaked in bore cleaner again through it. Um, brush it for another five strokes and then uh, uh, run some more patches through that are soaked and then two dry patches through the barrel, and then you can run a small amount of lubricant through it. So um, that's to start it off. That's, that's to what start we it off. Yep. Yep. So as we talk about that cleaning process and in there, it says solvents and cleaners, copper cleaners, solvents. What do we prefer 
Yeah, here. Where, what are we using here? What do we use? So, um, well, hoppies is what we end up using a lot of. Mm -hmm. So, um, no matter how we're cleaning, we'll use hoppies at least to some extent. We'll, um, this is speaking personally. So, as I said, you know, with each each rifle, we have these three different shooters and the way they shoot and all that. Well, a, a, same thing for cleaning. It's the customer experience. So, none of us clean exactly the same way. So, there mm -hmm. again, it's just we're throwing that in there for a, for a customer's experience. So, um, for me personally, I will use hoppies. Um, breaking the barrel in once I get to maybe the 20, 20 shots or something, then I will start using the, the copper cleaner. Um, and I'll not let the barrel soak. It, right? Not overusing it. No, and there's, there's some out there that you can use that, uh, well, like a, a CR 10 by Barnes, that one's, uh, if you let it sit in your barrel a real long time, it can actually do damage, but it's a great way to get copper off. You just want to let it sit in there for maybe 10, 15 minutes, um, never overnight. But then mm -hmm. there's other, uh, there's, over, oh, there's other overnight ones. You gotta yes, pay attention. like a wipeout, right? Yeah. A wipeout works great, but you, you spray it in and then let it sit all night and wipe it out the next day. And so there's you just have to be sure you're following Especially the, when you're messing with those solvents and stuff, you read the instructions yes, on absolutely. the one that you bought yep. because you can mess it up. Yep. Mm -hmm. You can mess it up big time. <clears throat> and then you'll find, this is another thing, you'll find some barrels like having some copper in there, you know, and, hmm. and other barrels like being clean. And some people never clean their rifle at all, and that's what they swear that's the best thing yeah. for it. And, yeah, I do know a and lot of so, people like that. Yeah. And so, again, for me personally, I kind of like the idea of having a barrel very clean because if I can make the barrel clean, it's repeatable. So if I can make it shoot really well clean, then I can always go and clean it and get it back to, to its standard. Sure. So that's my opinion. So I like cleaning. Um, so after the break in, I'll put the copper solvent in it. And then, you know, I'll just kind of let the barrel tell me what it, what it wants. I'll, I'll go through the first 20 rounds and, and if it's still shooting well, maybe we'll go through the next 20 rounds and, you know, you might see, start seeing some variants, throw a copper cleaner in there. It might help. It might not, but you know, you're, you're just trying to learn your gun as you're going through this. So. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, which this is another thing I do want to point out is, is while you're going through this break-in procedure, um, and then afterwards doing your shooting, if you start, if you go through this procedure and you know what your rifle is capable of, and you start seeing it vary a little bit, then you know something's changed, and you can go in there and maybe say, you know, clean it. Maybe that's the first thing. The second thing is like checking the torque on your action screws. That's the, that was, what you just said is the two most common things. When yep. somebody calls us and says, my gun's not shooting well, those are the first two things we tell them. And generally speaking, it is the main issue for what One of those. The, the, the question, the inquiry was about, is either the, the torque on the action screws or the a copper buildup, a substantial copper buildup, which is affecting accuracy. Mm -hmm. And the other thing with the, um, as a barrel gets really dirty, your pressure starts to go up as well. Um, Maybe not like after 10 shots or 20 shots, but let's say after 100 shots, you know, you're you're getting enough built up in your barrel to where the pressure starts going up. Um, so your your bolt might start getting sticky or something like that. I mean, there again, it's just my opinion. Clean yeah. the rifle every once in a while and be yeah. sure that you're you have a good baseline. So. Mm -hmm. All right. So on the break-in procedure, we've got we've cleaned the barrel. What's the next step? Okay. Um, so then you fire three shots. Now this is one of those things. Um, there's Kind of want to say there's there's not there are multiple ways of breaking in barrels. This is just the way that we do it sure. here. Um, part of it's because we're shooting so many guns um, that we don't have time to shoot. Like for example, shoot one shot clean, shoot another shot clean, shoot another shot clean, and do that ten times, and then maybe start firing two rounds and clean. So so this is kind of a quick way for us to get through the the break in process. Um, and we still see very good accuracy. So by us following this, it doesn't seem to be making these rifles shoot poorly. Yeah. So it also helps to bring you within potentially one box. Yes. If you didn't want to shoot two rounds, which we would suggest. Um, but if you didn't, you could break in your rifle with 20 shots, which is a pretty big plus. Yep. So clean the barrel, fire three of the first load of the first load. And then um, you clean the barrel after that. And then you can go right in to fire in three more shots uh, of the second load. Of the second load, and so using those two, you're going to start to see maybe some patterns already with the first six shots right off the bat. And then you'll clean the barrel, and then you'll shoot that first load again, three more shots. Clean the barrel, 
shoot three more shots of the second one. And you continue on there until you get to, let's see, 15 shots through. And so, and then um, you can use your five rounds or whatever. You're, we basically say after 15 or so rounds, you can start shooting more than three between cleanings. Gotcha. And generally speaking, when we looked at that data, don't you start seeing some pretty good accuracy groupings after about a dozen shots? Is that about right? I would say a majority of the time you... 12 you'll, is like that. You'll see where you'll see how the rifle's going to do after 12 rounds. It can certainly depend, though, on the cartridge and the rifle. I mean, um, you know, we have seen some rifles where it, it, it took quite a few more shots to break in, and mm -hmm. others where, you know, it's like, you know, the first group out of a gun might be really good, and the gun just continues to shoot well. So, um, you know, I don't know that there's a hard and fast rule right there. Um, but, but we have seen some cartridges that, take a little longer to, to break in and others that don't and so um, I think one of the biggest points of all this is that you're getting to know your gun and and you're also getting to know you know you're working on your shooting technique I mean uh, I think people don't understand some of the nuances to just the way you're shooting the gun the way you're holding it and how that affects yeah. your accuracy as well and so it's a very good thing to, to just spend a little more time shooting your gun and understanding how it shoots and how you know if you're if when you fire the gun and you always are you know aimed you know way off to the right after every shot then you know adjust your position as well so i guess uh what i'm saying is is just that you know this is about un knowing your gun and knowing yourself and how how they interact mm. um so so that's part of it but yeah a lot of guns will shoot very well within those first 20 shots but others sometimes won't yeah why not so the great thing about shooting two loads is as you're doing your three shot groups, you're, you're able to say, oh man, this whatever bullet, load one is shooting really well. Every time I shoot load one, load two, maybe it's not shooting as well, or maybe it's vice versa, but you're, you're learning what's happening. And then through that break-in process, if it's 20, 22 shots, then you've got enough to go game time on when, when you're done. Yep. So it's, I, I really like the, using two loads it, oh it, yeah it's it's pretty pretty cool you yeah. learn more than just getting one ammo type going to the range and breaking it in and if for some reason your barrel doesn't like that ammo type you didn't learn a lot in that range trip so in the middle as we're talking about this procedure and we're talking about shooting uh, a lot of rounds down that barrel where does heat come into play so that's again every rifle is different um, but this is, uh, I, I was going to bring this up as Jim was talking here too, but, um, you know, when you're firing these first three shots, the customer experience, again, I may shoot three rounds as fast as I can. And, and Jim may wait three minutes between each shot. I, you know, I don't know what his process is, but everybody's different. Um, if you're, when you shoot those three rounds and you shoot them very quickly, your barrel is going to be pretty warm. And in general, um, the groups will start to open up as your, as your barrel starts to warm so, um, you know, there again, it just kind of depends if you're trying to get the rounds through there real quick. I don't think you're going to do any damage to your barrel shooting three shots as fast as you can. Now, if you want to shoot all 22 shots through your <laughs> rifle as fast as you can, I wouldn't recommend that, you know. Right. So, um, <clears throat> when you guys are doing your testing and you're shooting number twos, which is a Weathermark LT, sure, um, uh, an AccuMark, which is a number three barrel. Um, a carbon mark, which is the carbon barrels, but really the more along the steels, you see a large difference between a number two and a number three? Uh, I would say yes, yeah. Um, you know, number twos will will and can shoot just as accurately as a, a number three. Um, and, and again, every rifle's different. As you so like, I'm saying as we this, go back to this, <laughs> yep. you might have a number two barrel that's shooting as good as any number three barrel you've ever seen. Absolutely. Seen, but that's just yep. because it's that that. That, that barrel, that gun, yeah. that barrel. But the number threes, I would say, uh, usually you can shoot different kinds of ammo, and it will do better with mul a multitude of different of ammos. Whereas, like maybe a number two contour, you might find one or two loads that it really likes, but it really doesn't like a couple other loads. You know, so it really just, doesn't like them. Yeah, you're saying like it's pretty obvious. And so, yeah, the the number three seems like it's. Hmm. Uh, little more forgiving maybe with the type of ammo and if, if you're doing reloading maybe it helps with some of that mm -hmm. you know so what, what would you say jim you agree with that or yeah absolutely yeah um 
you know, you, you just you have more support around your barrel and you can handle a little more heat with a bigger contour. And so, you know, certainly there's, there's a, a difference in accuracy versus, you know, your barrel contours. And so the smaller contours tend to not shoot as well as the larger ones, but yeah, basically. So as you're, as you're going through this process and you clean, like in the middle, you're whatever, 12 shots in, are you waiting? Like, are you touching the barrel and making sure it's like, oh, it's, I can grab it. So I'm, I'm ready to go shoot the next three shots or do you, how do you manage the heat in the barrel? Well, usually I will do that. Yes. I'll make sure that the barrel is at least able to touch and it doesn't feel, you know, hot. Right. Um, but during the break-in, I'm, I'm not that worried about it necessarily because the although I'm trying to see what the, what the gun can do during the break-in, I'm really not necessarily um, trying to get the best accuracy during the break-in. Sure. Either. So it's, it's not until later where I'll start, you know, really letting time pass between shots um, or between different ammo types or whatever. But, um, yeah, I mean, so, yes, I touch it and, and make sure that it's, you know, nice and cool. Um, but generally when I'm doing my firing three and cleaning the barrel, by the time I'm done cleaning the barrel, it's cool it's enough. Cool enough. Yeah. Sure. So say somebody shoots um, their first three, their second three, their third three, and their fourth three because they're keeping track of maybe their group size. Um, somewhere in the middle of that break-in, are, are you or anywhere in there? Are you seeing those groups fluctuate during this break-in? So just so I'm just wanting somebody that at the bench shooting, they're not shooting a two inch on the first one, a one and a half on the second group, um, a three on the third, and they freak out on the third. And they go, oh my gosh! And then they shoot another three inch group, and oh god, this is this is ridiculous. It's going the wrong way. What's yeah, happening? Yeah, like you're seeing that fluctuation in most of the the break-ins, right? Yes. Yep. Um, but when I when we do see that, I mean, if you go from one inch to three sure, sure. inch, it might have been an exaggeration. Yeah, yeah. But but that has happened, and so if that happens, check your action screws. You know, make sure your scope's on. You know, everything's tight and torqued down. But sure. But yes, we de there definitely is some fluctuations, and um, and even if you find a gun that really likes a type of ammo, um, and you consistently get five shots, maybe in three quarters of an inch or something. Sometimes you might end up with an inch and a yeah. half group. We're also I mean, talking about just shooter just in general. Shooter, yeah, mm -hmm. shooter conditions. Those shots. Yep, a butterfly flew in, you know, who knows. Right? <laughs> yeah. And, and if we look at, to it, at, again, going back to, you know, your group size, three shots is, is just a sample of a gun that will shoot a group like this, you know, shoot um, an inch and a half group. Um, three so shots is a small sample of that, and so you, you could end up with, you know, two shots that are towards the center and another one that's out. And, and again, you know, if you were able to shoot five shots, seven shots, 10 shots, you would, you would have a better idea of really whether gun, that gun's shooting. And so when you just shoot three shots and one of your groups is, is, you know, a half inch and the other group is an inch and a half, uh, it, it's, if it's just a three shot group, that's not necessarily something to be really concerned right. about because you're kind of getting a sampling of, of what that gun's accuracy is and the more groups you get through it the more you'll understand what that gun is capable of you know another thing too as as the break-in procedure um, cleaning will get easier I mean so that's something that you're not only are you breaking in the gun for getting your your good group size but you're also breaking it in so when you're cleaning it, it you know the the brushes go through clean or easier. You the can feel patches, it getting yep. easier. There's you a know, lot, isn't there a lot of, there's a lot of like literature out there about people that break in a rifle by feel, right? Mm -hmm. This is getting into a whole different deal, which I'm not going to jump into, but that's a can of worms. You're I've, trying I've to read, right I've there. read up on it and it's actually pretty interesting because people will say that as they break in that barrel and they'll feel it as they clean it and they, all that stuff that they, they'll be like, Oh, it's done. Yep. Yep. And that's just the, that's the point here too, is like after shooting 20 rounds, your barrel may be shooting good groups. I mean, acceptable groups, good hunting groups, maybe good bench rest groups, whatever, but still may not be broke in. I mean, you know, you, your brush still may be kind of hard pulling and pushing and sure. And it's not broke in till 50 shots, but you know, and your group may continue to get smaller, but, um, for our standards, you know, and for my standards, after 20 shots, I would consider it broken in good enough to go out and 
and start hunting. And you know, one thing that I, so that, that Jim talked about last week that I had never thought about ever was that, and I don't want to say you had a sheet of paper or something. I don't know why I'm visualizing it, but you, you said if, you know, if there's a, let's say there's a target that's three inches and let's say you put 80 rounds into that target percentage wise, like you might have, like, let's say you shot 80 rounds and let's say eight of those rounds were in that three inch circle, but all your other rounds were in that center. Statistically speaking, that's like a, a fantastic rifle. But if I were to go to the range and I were to sit down on a bench and I were to shoot and one of those three inchers had messed up my one, three or five shot group, I would probably be upset. I'd be like, oh man, it has yeah. flyers off to the right, but maybe I'm not shooting 80 rounds out of it. So like, that's the weird thing that I had never thought about, like 60, 80 rounds. If you statistically put that, all those shots in one bucket, you could see exactly what it was doing. And if you had eight shots and eight flyers at 80, you'd be like, man, that's, I'll take that any day. If the rest of them were just nailing in there, which was really the case on a lot of those rifles you guys were shooting. Yeah, and really, again, that's kind of what I was, the point I was getting at is that that's what we're trying to do is we're trying to, um, because we have constraints on how much ammo we can shoot, plus, you know, we're trying not to, if you shoot 80 shots through your gun in a row, you're going to get it really hot. So you can't do that. There's right. some constraints there. But that's really what we care about. We want to know, you know, uh, time and time again, what size of group is this going to shoot, you know, and, and, and where is it going to fall in. And so we take this smaller statistical sampling, a three-shot or a five-shot group, and, and we determine, well, hey, you know, if we can get three-shot groups under an inch, then we know that this gun will shoot well for us. And um, but like you're saying, that there's a chance that you can have those other shots fall outside of that. But, yeah, we're, we're trying to get an idea of, of how well this gun's going to shoot and if it's going to go and kill an elk for us or, or you know, do whatever we need it to do. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, does somebody sacrifice something by not breaking in the barrel? Mm, that's a, that's it's a loaded question. Right? Yeah. It's also a personal, right? It's also a personal. Yep. There's lots of people that do no break in whatsoever. And, uh. And their rifles, they can shoot. They're happy fine with them as well, you know? right? Mm -hmm. They're happy with them, and so they don't care. But speaking from a somebody worried that if they don't break it in, will it hurt it? No, right? No, I don't. I don't think so. No, no. I it, mean you're just trying to get stuff down the barrel, just and then you know, like say I like the cleaning, but just trying to get stuff down the barrel and and uh, so all those shots can be consistent down the road, you know. So. Yeah, and, and it's important to understand and recognize, too, what your goal is with the rifle and what your purpose sure. is. You know, if you are not going to shoot that rifle beyond 150 yards and, you know, you're experienced at that range, you've got other guns, you shoot well, you want to go out, make sure that gun will perform at that range, and it probably won't take you a lot of rounds, and, and you'll know that, yeah, that gun can do that. Um, and so, you know, that break-in process is probably isn't a huge deal. You just need a few shots in there to make sure your gun's sighted in. It's going to shoot the way you want. But if you're looking at, well, hey, I want to be able to, you know, shoot five, 600 yards, you know, we can, um, then you, you really need to understand the gun's capability, your capability, um, and, and know what it's doing. And so you might shoot a lot more rounds through it. It'll get broken during that process and you'll understand what the gun's doing. And, and guns can change over time, you know, pressures and velocities and, and particularly shooting factory ammunition. You know, if you buy some Hornady ammunition using stuff you had bought five years ago versus today, it could shoot differently. And so uh, understanding what you're going to do with the gun will change the way that you shoot it, the way you break it in, and the way you understand what the gun does. You know, again, you, you just got to know what you want out of that gun and, and what you need it to do for you. Yeah. So another just basic question for people would be, let's say we have three rounds for an RPM right now. Uh, one of them costs forty dollars a box. One of them sixty five dollars a box. Two of them. Two, two yeah. of them are sixty five dollars a box. Yeah. One of them is forty dollars a box. Naturally, if I was breaking this gun in, I'd probably buy that forty dollar box for one of my rounds, and probably one of the sixty five dollar boxes for my other load. That's fine too. Right? Oh, yeah. You're just trying to get the rounds down the barrel. Doesn't matter yes. if it's select or select plus if we're talking about Weatherby factory ammunition. We're just suggesting yeah. that you use loads 
as data points and and being able to shoot them down the barrel. I, th I think the key to the whole thing, and, and really the key to probably being a, a good shooter, is doing the same thing the same every time, right? We're trying to get a repeatable thing, and that's why we've got this break-in process because as you guys in manufacturing change a procedure or we, we get a new reamer or something, and we need to make sure that that reamer is going to do what we expect it to do, so we're going to take a couple barrels that have been reamed with that new reamer and do this process and then check it for accuracy and make sure we're getting the results that we want. So we've got to do it the same every time. So we've got to control things the same for a consumer. You've got to go out there and try to do the same thing every time from trigger pull to how you break your barrel in on a new rifle. It's just repeatable performance is the name of the game. Yes. Through the testing you guys have done, you guys sometimes bring a gun in there and it just is like incredibly accurate. I mean, yes. we, we talk about how barrels <laughs> are different and guns are different, but well, don't we have a couple like serious shooters down there in the basement? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Um, I, I was so impressed when we started shooting the BSF carbon fiber barrels. They, uh, they just shoot phenomenal. So 300 Weatherby. Yep, very impressed. So great combination. Great with that combination. BSF and 300 Weatherby. And the the way the stock feels, it's uh, actually really fun to shoot too. It doesn't beat your shoulder up, and you know, shooting 20 shots down the range is a, a pleasure, not a chore. So right. Yeah. That's cool. So That's cool. so uh, what what's the best group you've shot, and on what rifle setup was it? Um, it was a 300 uh, Weatherby uh, Carbon Carbon Mark Elite. Um, my best one was a, a .54 uh, five-shot group. So, Five-shot group. Nice. How about you, Jim? Five-shot. Uh, gosh, um, you know, I've uh, here at Weatherby, I've just been shooting a lot of 300 Weatherbys. I think I shot a pretty decent uh, – I'm, I'm trying to remember. I think I was shooting – You shoot a, a lot. You, uh, guys, you guys shoot a lot, so it would be hard, yeah. to, hard to figure <laughs> yeah. out what exactly would be the – yeah, with these new barrels that we were just cranking off recently, mm -hmm. I, you know, a point six five shot group um, recently was a good one. So, yeah, and we broke the accuracy record with the three hundred Weatherby BSF this year, right? Yes, we did. John, yep. our yep. our accuracy shooter. Yeah, uh, and it's escaping that. me, but it was a. It's a point oh six three shot group. Yeah, point oh six. Yep. There. That's important like fact in that is the O. Is yeah. the O <laughs> after the decimal is .06. So not even a tenth of an inch. Yes. And I would venture to say, I never saw that, but I would venture to say if you weren't shooting on the Ailer, I don't think people would know that that hole was three shots. Yeah, you, you'd think you hit it the first time and missed and the missed, target completely twice. That's <laughs> what I would, yeah, that's exactly what I would, yeah, that's exactly what that looks like. Luckily with our system, we're able to yeah. see that it's telling us exactly where it hit. That's uh, really which cool. Which is great, but that's an almost ridiculous. That's a really, really good group. And actually, the first rounds out of a 6.5 RPM were really good. Were incredibly. Yeah, I think. It was a 300 Dave, yard. Dave it was shot. 300 yard grouping. Yeah. I think it was a point, point three, point three. Yeah. yeah. Point three. Three one at 300 yards, which was awesome. And that was, and so interesting fact, that was actually one of the uh, backcountry. TI rifles, so it was a number one mod. mod XL, yeah, barrel. So very thin. So very, very the thinnest. The Basically thinnest a pencil barrel. Barrel yeah. we've yep. got shooting a 6.5 RPM shot that group. Yep. So pretty cool. Well, I hope everyone learned a little bit. I did. Um, I appreciate you guys coming up here and talking with us. And uh, the whole point of that was just to get some more knowledge out there so people understand things a little bit better. And we hope that you um, – listened and enjoyed it and if you're interested in finding the weatherby break-in procedure um, you can go to weatherby.com slash faq and then in that search bar you can type in break-in and it should come up with both shotguns and rifles this specifically was about rifles and uh, check out all of our literature on that and also uh you know google a little bit see what other people think because like we talked about it's it's actually really individual we just put something out there so that you can see what we would suggest here at Weatherby. So thanks for listening, and we're looking forward to hitting you up next time.